Good day, everybody. Once again, we are back together. Welcome to our channel. And, uh, um, you know, for those of you who are new, please just uh, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Of course, you must do it now. Okay. Right. And we'll continue to dish out that uh, those lovely lessons for you. Um, also, just don't forget to hit that notification bell. All right. So that you are notified every time that we are posting a new lesson. All right. And um, of course, if you need to get in touch with us uh, to get assistance in mathematics or physical science, uh, our email address is info at mlungisinkosi.co.za. All right. So we are still looking at Euclidean geometry. This time I'm going to be talking about proportionality. And um, uh, we're going to be talking about, especially for the grade 12 uh, syllabus, we are going to looking at ratio and proportion and so on. But what I want to do, uh, first of all, is just talking about, um, you know, proportionality. What exactly does it mean? Okay. Um, let's talk about the ratio, first of all. So if I've got a line, uh, say for argument's sake, we've got A to B. And we extend that line, um, you know, to C. And I tell you that uh, from A to B is, you know, just for argument's sake, let's say um, two meters, right? And uh, from B to C is four meters. Now, I want you to please note, what does that mean? Okay, in terms of ratios, what is a ratio? Well, it's essentially... You know, they are relative, the relative sizes um, of something, okay? So in this case, um, and, and note, I did say relative. So it means that you are relating the one versus the other, okay? So I can actually say it means that A over B, now uh, note this carefully, uh, AB rather over BC is equal to 2 over 4. Right, so that's two meters over four meters. But what is the basic ratio of that? You can see that you can actually simplify that even further because if you're putting it as a, a, a fraction, we can simplify that fraction further and say, well, it's actually a one over two, okay? So that means that BC in terms of ratio is twice uh, a b that makes sense right because if you look at this if i look at bc it's four meters whilst a b is also is is two meters so it means that the distance a b is twice so that's a ratio okay so it's twice the ratio of uh, bc another way of um, you know just expressing that is that i can say well it means that now, you, you note, I can actually uh, sort of cross multiply. Remember, we said that AB over BC, okay, is equal to 1 over 2. So, in this case, I can simply say, well, let's actually just, um, you know, multiply that into there. So, it means that I can say AB is equal to a half of BC. Do you see how uh, there are different ways of expressing the same thing? Right now, I want to actually just make, um, you know, just contrast that against something else. So let's say we've got another line. OK, uh, in fact, before I even go to another line, uh, another way that I can actually express that is just by simply saying the ratio of AB uh, to BC, OK, is equal to one is to two now. It does not mean that AB is equal to 1 or BC is equal to 2, but it means that relative, in, in sheer relative sizes, okay, uh, BC would be actually twice AB, okay? Right, so that's another way of expressing uh, what we had over there. Right, so please remember when they give uh, something like that to you, you can also put it back as saying AB over BC, is therefore equal to 1 over 2. Just keep that in mind, right? Now, let's talk about the next line that I wanted to talk about. So, suppose we've got another, uh, you know, uh, line there. And we say, well, this time around, 
uh, of course we're not looking at at them uh, you know in terms of uh, scale all right so if i give you that value there as three meters um and uh you know six meters okay so in this case what does that mean uh let's say this is line d e f okay so what this also means is that i can say well uh d e again over e f right note again i can place them in terms of size that's going to be three over six um but if you look at it once again, so uh, if you look at uh, in terms of ratio and proportion, we can also say, well, three goes into itself once into six, it goes twice. So it simply means that DE or rather DE uh, over, uh, so that's DE over EF is equal to again one over two so if i give you a ratio of one over two it doesn't necessarily tell me about the distance okay what it simply does is that it tells me again about the relative sizes uh, versus uh, uh, to each other so in this case what this simply means is that uh, ef would be twice uh, the value of de but it doesn't tell me what the size of DE actually is, okay? So I want you to be careful when you're dealing with ratios, okay, so that you know how to uh, place them relative to each other. Again, uh, just uh, one other thing that you can also say is that if I look at, uh, for argument's sake, DE, okay, let's take DE, which is 3, divided by uh, DF, so you can also do that, right? So DE, that's 3, uh, but DF, which means it's the entire uh, length of that line there, uh, is 9, right? So what does that mean? It also means that I can take the ratio between DE uh, over DF, and in that case, uh, that would be, well, 3 goes into itself once, and into 9, it goes 3 times, so that means that would be 1 over 3. So what this again means is that I can take DE to DF in this case, and I would write that as 1 is to 3. Okay, right. Now, um, we're going to look at the theorems. I hope this uh, uh, helped you in terms of, you know, how to uh, manipulate, uh, you know, ratios and so on. Okay, uh, but we're going to go into the theorems uh, that have to do with ratio and proportion uh, for uh, um, Euclidean geometry. And we're just going to make sure we understand each one of them. And we're going to go into, uh, you know, just practical applications. Okay, right. All right. So let's start with the first theorem. Okay. Uh, the first theorem uh, in uh, ratio and proportion or in proportionality uh, simply says a line that is drawn parallel uh, to one side of a triangle um, will divide the other two sides proportionally. All right, so what that simply means, if I've got triangle ABC, okay, and now uh, we've got to draw another line that is parallel to one side, which is DE, okay? So what this means is that if I draw that parallel line DE, what it does is that it will break the other sides, which is side AB and side AC, uh, proportionally. So what this simply means is that, therefore, AD, note, over DB, okay, will now be proportional, okay, to AE over, now note, so this side over here divided by this side there should be equal to that side divided by this side, EC. Okay, so they are proportional to each other. Okay, uh, so in this case, so that's AD over DB should be equal to AE over ec okay right just note uh, that another way of uh, saying the same thing 
is that the ratio AD uh, to DB, okay, should be equal to AE uh, to EC. So um, those actually mean exactly the same thing, right? So in this case, uh, remember that, that uh, um, now it does not mean, again, uh, as we did say, indicate there, uh, you, you remember that I had given you two lines that are proportional to one is to two, but they were not equal, right? Look at this. This was two meters and four meters, but the other one was three meters and six meters. However, both of them had a ratio of one over two, right? One over two. But when you look at the lines themselves, they are not equal. So remember that uh, uh, proportionality all right, does not necessarily mean equality. Okay, right. So in this case, just another thing that I want to show you there is that you also could have said, okay, um, uh, just remember this for, uh, you know, just for the future, that I also could say that AD, okay, uh, so the smaller side divided by the entire side, which is AB, okay, is also equal to AE, all right, divided, so that's the smaller side, okay, divided by the uh, bigger side, which is uh, AC, okay, um, but also what we've just found is that that would also be equal to DE uh, over the whole side, which is BC, okay, right, so uh, just please note that, uh, you know, just as an application, okay, this is theorem one, okay, of ratio and proportionality. Now, there's a converse to this theorem, and the converse is just as simple as follows, right? Remember, we had said that um, uh, a line that is drawn parallel uh, to one side of a triangle divides the other two sides proportionally. Now, uh, the converse of that theorem just simply says, if we have... Uh, a line that is drawn, right? So we are not saying a line that is parallel, but if we have a line drawn to, um, uh, and it breaks the other sides uh, proportionally, uh, look at me uh, using equality there, and it breaks the other sides uh, proportionally, then we can conclude that that line is parallel. So uh, remember that one, uh, the converse doesn't start with parallel lines. But if it says, so in this case, what it simply says is that if, so if we find, okay, in triangle ABC again, and that is DE, right? So it says if uh, AB, um, or rather, let me say a, AD, okay? So if the line AD over DB, is equal to AE over EC, right? So note, they are proportional to each other, right? Sometimes they may give us even uh, the length of that, uh, I mean, the, you know, just that proportionality. So if they, they are proportional, then it, it, therefore, we can conclude that it means that DE must therefore be parallel to BC. Okay, just note the difference there. Um, but, you know, pretty much the same thing, but uh, just said in reverse there. Okay, right. Now let's look at the second theorem. All right, so looking at theorem two. Okay, so theorem two is not really different, much different from theorem one. Um, it's a special case of theorem one. Okay. And uh, what it simply says is that if we've got a line segment, okay, that joins two midpoints of a triangle, okay, so in this case, we are simply saying if we've got a line segment, a uh, line segment rather, that joins two midpoints, so in this case, let's say this side is equal to that, okay, so uh, you'd see there those are two midpoints, so that's a, B, C again, and let's say that's our triangle D, E. Okay, so it says a line segment that joins 
two midpoints of a triangle, note in this case, we can say that it would therefore be parallel to the third side. Okay, so it means that it would be parallel to this side. Okay, and by the way, half, okay, that line segment would be half the third side. All right, now let me explain quickly. Right, so it simply says, if we know that this line segment divides, okay, that's a midpoint, D is a midpoint of AB, and E is a midpoint of EC, therefore we can conclude that DE is parallel uh, to BC, right? And that DE would be a half of BC. Let me show you where that, where that com uh, comes from, right? So if I took AD again, that's a special case of, uh, um, you know, theorem one. So if I took AD, all right, that's one unit, okay, over DB, uh, okay, so that would be one is to one, right? But let me take AD over AB, which is the length of that entire side, okay, uh, AB. That would be equal to AE over uh, AC, right? But I want you to please remember. So I'm taking one unit. So suppose, uh, uh, suppose you know, this was three centimeters. What would be the length of AB? It would be three plus another three centimeters. So that would make that six centimeters, right? So in this case, proportionally, and, and by the way, what we mean by proportional is that this side can be four centimeters. It doesn't have to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, three centimeters as uh, just like the other side. So uh, what that means is that obviously this would also be four centimeters. The fact of the matter is that it's a midpoint. Uh, the ratio of AD to DB would be one is to one, right? But if you note the ratio for AD, okay, over, uh, in this case, the entire side there, so that would be 3 over 6 uh, for AD over uh, AB, right? So that, it, that would be 1 is to 2, isn't it? So uh, if I note again, AE over AC, that would be 1, uh, 4, divided by 8, so that would again be 1 is to 2, so what it therefore means is that DE, now please listen carefully, it also means that DE over BC, all of those sides would therefore equals to 1 is to 2. Okay, right. So please keep that in mind that if we draw a line segment and in this case it divides uh, the, you know, the, the, the two sides, um, in this case, or oh, it's the midpoint to two sides of a triangle, okay? So, therefore, it, it means it would be parallel uh, to the third side, but what it also means is that um, uh, it would be, the uh, that line segment would be half uh, the other side, okay? So, please keep in mind that it means that DE uh, would be equal to a half of BC, Okay. Right, just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, the converse of that, uh, the converse of that theorem is that if we have a line segment once again, and in this case it is parallel, so they are telling you it's parallel, and in this case it is, um, you know, it, it, it is in the midpoint of, of one side, so therefore it means that it will also uh, divide the other side equally as well okay so in this case we're simply saying if we draw a line so if we've got a b c uh, d e okay and all that we are told is that d e is parallel to b c and we are told that uh, um, you know d is the midpoint okay so if D is the midpoint of uh, side AB, right? So that's all that we are told. Then we can conclude that therefore E will also be the midpoint, okay, of 
AC. So that's our conclusion. Okay. So in that case, it would mean AE over EC uh, uh, would be actually, uh, um, or rather we can say AE is equal to AC. So we can therefore conclude that AE is equal to uh, EC rather. Okay. So that would be equal to EC. All right. So that is what we call the midpoint theorem. Okay. That's the special case of theorem one. All right. And uh, please just keep that in mind as we go to theorem three. All right. So in theorem three, we are moving a little bit away from parallel lines now to uh, angles, uh, triangles rather. So um, if we've got two triangles, okay, let me just draw those two triangles there. And I've got triangle ABC and another triangle there. Let's call this triangle DEF. Okay, now you just need to be careful in this case, but I'm, I'm going to uh, talk about it just now. Now, if you remember, uh, when we talked about triangles, we said that uh, triangles can be similar and can be congruent. Now, congruent triangles, remember, these are triangles that, you know, you can place one on top of the other and they are perfectly equal, you know, um, you know, you, yeah, you're perfectly equal. But in this case, when we say similar triangles, we simply mean that, uh, uh, you know, the ratios of the sides can be proportional. And that's theorem three is essentially uh, that simply says if we've got angles, OK, triangles, that are equiangular so meaning if let's say just for argument's sake uh, side a okay let me just make it simpler or, or rather uh, angle a is equal to angle d all right and let's say angle b is equal to angle e and they don't need to be placed you know um yeah just like i've i've done here that the sides that are uh, the angles that are equal are basically on the same you know side in terms of uh, space okay and let's say now angle c of course therefore that means that angle c and that's all you need to do if you can prove two angles equal then of course the third side uh, automatically uh, becomes uh, equal so let's say there we've got angle c equal to angle f so now Angle uh, uh, theorem three simply says if two triangles are equiangular, then remember, if they are equiangular, it means that they are therefore similar triangles. Now, note when I place it, if I can prove A equals to D, B is equals to E, and uh, C equals to F, then if you look at those two triangles, they are not equal. If I placed a uh, triangle DEF on top of uh, uh, ABC, uh, they are they are definitely not equal, but in this case, they are equiangular. So these are similar triangles. So now I can say, well, it means that triangle, now note, means that triangle A, B, C, note in this case, when we say similarity, you've got those uh, vertical lines there, okay? Three vertical lines. Now, is... Uh, similar to triangle. Now, please note that you need to place the sides uh, or the, the vertices that are equal, okay? So, in this case, uh, or the angles that are equal, um, you know, um, uh, in order. So, which angle is equal to A? It's angle D, right? Which angle is equal to B? It's angle E. And which angle is equal to C? It's angle F. So, that becomes very important because when we're dealing with proportionality. So theorem three simply says, if they are similar triangles, therefore it means their sides are proportional, okay? So in this case, all right, uh, the, the sides on the same side, of course. So therefore what it means is that I'm going to say, therefore AB over, now note, I'm saying AB, so would be over DE, so that means AB over DE is equal to, note, now I'm going to say BC 
all right so over ef can you see that so that is going to be bc over ef all right which also is equal to note this time around again so that's ac over df so that would be ac over ef all right so just please keep that in mind that once i prove that uh, triangles are similar then it means that their sides are proportional okay so in this case i just need to always be careful how i place that okay so i need to make sure that uh, each of each of the similar triangles follow each other in order all right so that i can always put it uh, in the right order all right i hope that makes sense uh, in this case uh, so uh, i think uh, let's talk about also the converse of that so it means if the sides are proportional then we can say it means that uh, 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 it's an equiangular triangle okay yeah so if the sides are proportional so it means that uh, the triangles are similar i think that makes sense right so if we can uh, prove that the sides are proportional then we can conclude that the angles uh, or rather the triangles are therefore similar that's just the the converse of that theorem all right now let's go into the fourth uh, theorem and then we're going to go into application all right so let's look into theorem four right so theorem four is slightly different from uh, the others that we've looked at okay so theorem four simply says if we draw a perpendicular from the vertex of a 90 degree triangle so let's say there it is uh, we had uh, triangle a b c okay and we are now going to draw a perpendicular so that means that we're going to make sure that this line here becomes uh, 90 degrees to the other side now what it does is that it divides the triangle into two triangles that are similar okay um, so let's call that d the side d there uh, it divides the uh, triangle into two triangles uh, that are similar so that would mean that um, and now i've got two similar triangles but both of these triangles are also similar to the original triangle the bigger triangle which is abc so if you note there you've got three uh, triangles that are, are, are similar to each other and please i want you to note so what it means now uh, let me just uh, show those sides there so remember that's uh, we've got those sides that are, are common there right now what we're going to do is we're then going to say all right now we said remember uh, there are three triangles that are similar okay and those three triangles are a uh, triangle okay let me say triangle a b c should therefore be similar okay now note uh, to triangle uh, d now note i said a so a starts at the 90 degree so that should be uh, similar to triangle d b a okay but also what that simply means um you know maybe i should have actually given this a little bit more space okay let, let let me just deal with this one first so what that means is that if i take a b over d b this would be equal to um uh, a a, a b c rather uh, b c over b a okay but it would also mean that this would be equal to ac over uh, da all right so i hope that makes sense now uh, from that i want you to see something there because uh, this is what will help you every time that they ask you for those you know not so nice proofs if i cross multiplied those two just these two uh, ratios here what you then get is that a b now note a b and b a are the same thing so that uh, actually equals to a b squared 
is therefore equal to db multiplied by bc so sometimes they do give you those um you know squares there uh, and you know they you you're supposed to prove one uh, to be the square or whatever the case is this is usually the theorem that you're going to use to do that okay right um so what it also means is that triangle now i'm going to try and squeeze it over here so triangle abc again is similar uh, to triangle dac okay d again starting at the 90 degree okay a and c in this case uh, remember they are proportional to uh, the bigger triangle so what this again means is that if i take a b over uh, d a this would be equal to b c over a c and this again would be equal to um, a c over so a c over d c okay so i hope you're following that right remember we said a b this is over d a right and then you say b c so b c over a c and then finally we said a c over d c now again i want you to notice okay uh, you've got AC and AC there. So I can actually say this is AC squared is equal to BC times DC. Can you see that? Right, just taking between uh, those two sides there, okay, that are proportional to each other, I can actually now get AC uh, over, or rather AC squared equal to BC times DC. All right, um, I want to take the last one. Actually, I should have uh, made some space there. But uh, if you don't mind, uh, I am going to write it uh, onto here. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't make our space too cluttered. Okay, so that means that triangle DBA, again, is similar uh, to triangle DAC. Okay. So DAC, right? So please just make sure that when you're writing those triangles, you always try and, uh, you know, make sure that they are, the similar sides are on, yeah, basically the same side. Okay, so what that does now is that we've got DB again over uh, DA is equal to, okay, so we started DB over DA. And then now we've got BA over AC. So that's BA over AC. And this would be equal to, again, this is going to be DA, DA over uh, DC. Okay. Right. Again, you can see there I've got two DAs there. So it means that I can simply say dA squared if I cross multiply this guy here uh, with that guy there, right? So that dA squared, dA times dA and dB times dC. dA squared is equals to dB times dC. All right, so um, you've got those there, okay? Uh, so just please keep in mind what you do there, dA. That's, uh, I mean, DB and DA, and you've got uh, BA and AC. And finally, we had that last one, DA. Uh, no, I wanted to do that with a, a different color. Okay, so that's DA. So that's that yellow there uh, and DC. All right, and uh, what it does is that um, it simply breaks those down. Uh, into dA squared times uh, dB time uh, dA squared, that's dB times dC. All right, and uh, by the way, um, you know, when you take all of these uh, together, this is how we are able to prove uh, Pythagoras, right? Uh, you can do that for yourself, okay? Uh, proving that uh, BC squared, um, 
uh, in this case, right, would be equal to uh, um, AB, uh, or rather AB squared plus uh, BAC squared, right, from this triangle, the bigger triangle, right, so you can do that. Um, I'm not going to do that at the moment. So what I want us to do quickly uh, is just to talk about some rules when it comes to ratio and proportion. You know, many people think, oh, this is a very difficult section. Uh, and probably uh, to make this not so long, I'm not going to do the exercises now, but I'll leave that uh, for the next video. Okay, right. Uh, because it's important for us to get this one right. Uh, and in this case, just to make sure that we you know, you we, we can uh, do justice uh, to the questions. Let's talk about uh, a couple of rules just now. Right, now let's talk about the rules uh, that you're going to follow, okay? Um, you know, there isn't necessarily a basic, uh, uh, you know, just rules that you can follow per se, but there are some advices that I can give you, right? Um, number one, uh, don't panic. <laughs> okay, so when you're using ratio and proportion, uh, you know, when they ask you for proofs or whatever the case is, don't panic, you know. Uh, to be quite honest with you, let me advise you. Uh, in fact, let me tell you about my own story. Uh, I used to have quite a challenge, you know, having to prove, you know, when they say prove A, what, what, squared and, and, and all of that. So uh, don't panic. So if you find that, um, you know, doing those type of questions is somewhat problematic, start with the other stuff, okay? Um, because you'll always find that, uh, remember, you, you've, you've, you've already done quite a bit on the other uh, theorems already, the grade 11 theorems, uh, so to speak, okay? Uh, so don't panic, okay? Just treat it treat the diagram as is, you know, write down the information, uh, just, uh, um, you know, try to transfer all the given information uh, into the diagram, okay? So, for instance, if they tell you that's a tangent, okay, just uh, find a way, you know, if it's color for you, uh, show it through color, uh, find a way to show, to transfer information into the diagram, okay? So, transfer information, uh, into the diagram okay or if they say this angle is equal to that okay and it's just given all right and there's no other reason so uh, maybe give that angle a name give it a, a, a name x all right and then obviously indicate which other angle is actually equal to x that usually just helps okay right and remember that we are dealing with ratio and proportion does not mean that now we need to forget all the other things that we have done, okay, uh, on the other theorem. So, transfer information into the diagram, okay, so into your diagram, okay. And then, uh, thirdly, what I would like for you to do is remember, when you have to deal with proportionality, remember that you first need to prove at least two sides um, or two angles sim uh, 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 equal. So all you need to do, if you've got two triangles and you want to prove the sides are proportional, all you need to do first is uh, find similar or, or equal angles. Okay, so find equal angles. Equal angles. All right, and all you need to do is, you know, you just need to find two of them. Okay, right. Once you find uh, in a tri in two different triangles, that is, if you find two equal angles, then of course it infers that the third side uh, or the third uh, angle would therefore be equal, and as a result, uh, it means that the sides would be proportional. Okay, right. So please just uh, uh, remember this information. Okay. Um, what I want us to do, uh, I had said we're not going to tackle questions. But I actually would like to, uh, you know, look at a question, all right, uh, that we can use just as a startup, just to get us, uh, you know, warmed up a bit. Okay, right. Let's look at an example. And then, uh, of course, we will bring this session to a close. Right. So let's look at our first example. So they say if DE is parallel to BC, all right, 
uh, as it's indicated there. They said find X and Y. All right, so again, we're going to use, uh, when I look at this, of course, this is smelling of the first theorem, isn't it? So this simply says, all right, so we've got those parallel sides. Okay, so that means that the sides, or, or rather the, uh, yeah, it, it means that the other sides are, are, are proportional. So then I can conclude that, okay, so that's going to be AD uh, over um, AB, or rather, let me say AD over DB is equal to AE over EC, right? But of course, that, um, okay, so le let's leave it at that. So in this case, um, I can say, well, I know that AD is given to me as X plus 1. So they said find X and Y. So AD is X plus 1 over uh, DB, which is 3, is equal to AE, which is 4, divided by that X value there. And all that we simply do here is we cross multiply. So we're going to simply say, x into x plus 1, okay, which is equal to 3 times 4, which is 12. Of course, this looks like a, a quadratic equation now. So x times x, that should be x squared uh, plus, uh, in this case, that's, got, that's going to be x. x times 1 is x. Then I bring the 12 over to the other side, that becomes minus 12. And of course, all we can simply do, what are the factors of 12, such that when I subtract them, will give me 1, okay? And you'll note that's going to be 4 and 3. So I'm going to say x is 4, x is 3 there. And which one takes the, uh, which sign? So it tells me, uh, this negative sign tells me that the signs inside the brackets are, uh, um, you know, are not the same. Uh, but which sign do we take? So it's the bigger product that takes the sign of the middle term. So in this case, uh, that will be 4x and that will be minus 3. Okay, so note what do we have? x is equal to negative 4 or x is equal to 3. Now, because you're dealing with uh, distance or ratios in this case, um, that would simply mean this value over here is not applicable. Okay. Uh, this would not be applicable. Why? Uh, because remember, you're dealing with distance there. Uh, and in this case, distance can only be positive. Okay. So in this case, you, you, we will take x is equal to 3 as our answer. So we know what the value of x is. So that means that there, ad would actually be x plus 1, which is 4. And it means that ec would essentially be 3, right? And then uh, they also said we should find the value of y. Now, I want you to please note there that if I take, uh, please be very careful with the, that one there. So I would have to take the smaller value. So that would be AD over the entire distance there uh, over AB that whole side can you see so i took the smaller side divided by the entire side would therefore be equal to now note in this case it would be the same as uh, ae uh, over um, ac in that case but what it then uh, it does is that it's now equal to de over BC. So please, you can only use that DE over BC uh, if we take the one side over the entire side on the other sides. Now. So in this case, we've got, remember, we've just found the value of X. We found that value to be 3, right? So it means that AD is X plus 1, which is 4, uh, over AB. Now, A, B, that's 4 plus 3, that would be 7 in that case. So, you would be taking this value plus that value there. So, that would be 7, okay? Now, I'm going to take, because we're looking for Y, 
uh, let me take that DE over BC. Okay, so DE is 4. And in this case, if I take BC, okay, uh, BC is our Y value. And of course, what you can just simply do there, uh, again, you can uh, cross multiply 4 times Y, that would be 4Y, and which is equal to 4 times 7, okay? And in this case, if I divide both sides by 4, uh, that means that Y value is equal to 7. 7 units in total. All right, so I hope that you are able to follow, right? Uh, um, and this is how you would uh, go about answering that question. I'm going to take just one last question, and then uh, we call it a day. All right, so let's look at our second example. All right, uh, this will be some maneuvering that we are doing here. Uh, but essentially, we're given the ratio between AD to DB um, to be 2 is to 3. So maybe what we should do, so that's AD, uh, that's that side, so that's 2 uh, to DB, which is 3 uh, in that case. And then they also give us uh, the ratio. Now, in this case, this is BE over EC. So they say BE is 4. So you see, what I'm actually just doing is just taking that guy and rewriting it in a sense that BE, um, and if you divide by EC, in this case, that would be 4 over 3, right? So then that means BE, which means it's that in entire side there. In fact, let me just use a different color. Why not? Okay, so it means that my BE side is 4, okay, over EC, which is 3. Okay, right. Now, uh, in this case, what they want us to find is the ratio between CP and PD. Uh, so where we are going in this case is the ratio between CP, which is that guy there, uh, over PD, uh, which is, okay, let's find another color. Um, yeah, let's find that, let's use that turquoise. Okay, so over that ratio there. So this is where we're going, right? So now we need to devise a plan. I want you to please note, we're given that the sides, uh, uh, of course, AD, uh, uh, rather AE, uh, is parallel to uh, KD. So KD is parallel to EA, rather. Okay, so in this case, what we're going to do is because we're trying to get uh, into, when I look at the, the sides that we're looking for, they are in triangle CDK, all right? But we don't have much about CDK. So that would mean that I would need to get the ratios. Now, please, I want you to listen carefully uh, because those are parallel lines. Uh, in this case, I would have to get the ratios KE and EC in order for me to know those ratios between uh, DP and uh, um, uh, CP, in fact, CP and PD, uh, right? So that is what I would have to look for. Now, I'm going to just try to follow a method here. Remember where we are going. Remember what we have. Okay, I just want you to follow me in what I'm doing. All right. Um, so... I already have something about BE, but we don't have anything about, uh, um, sorry, we have something about EC, but we don't have anything about KE. So that's where we are going. So let's use, first of all, triangle ABE. Okay, so I'm going to say in triangle ABE, because I see I've got some something there about triangle uh, a, B, E. Now, uh, in triangle A, B, E, now I want you to please note in this case, remember I am moving towards K, E, right? So I am going to say, look, if I take 
um yeah because i've got that entire side over there let me take the entire side over there okay right so i am going to say a b okay uh, over a d so let's say a d which is the smaller side there okay over right the entire side over there which is a b so a b is equal to now note i'm being strategic here is equal to um a a uh so that's a d so that would be k e sorry about that so that would be equal to k e over b e all right can you see that now i know the ratio in this case of uh uh you know um uh, a b a d rather so a d would be five okay so that would be five because it's that three and two over there okay over uh so that's 80 sorry uh 80 is two actually sorry about that so 80 is two over a b which is five yeah there we go so a d is two over five and k e is the one that i'm looking for and uh b e uh in this case um, let me just say over b e okay right so um now i've got a ratio of b e right now please i want you to note i just want to write b e in terms of k e so in this case i'm going to just simply say b e um multiplied by two so this will be two b e is equals to five k e all right i don't want you to uh to to get lost along the way so b e uh in this case um in fact i i want b e because i've got another expression for b e let me rather use that there right so b e would actually be uh five over two ke i hope you can uh, you you understand that so i just expressed be as being a ratio of 5 over 2 ke right now as i did say you know this sometimes just uh, you know involves a bit of maneuvering here and there okay right now i've got an expression of uh, uh, be and ke now note in this case i've got be and ec over there so that means that i can actually take both of those and put them together okay i've got be there which is 5 over 2 ke but i also have be which is 4 over 3 ec so in this case now so that we don't get lost okay i have got uh if you don't mind i'm just gonna work over there so be is 4 over 3 ec okay but also i know that be from our previous one is also 5 over 2 ke 5 over 2 ke can you see that so in that case those are equal so it would mean that also the right hand sides are also equal okay i hope uh, i'm not making it too messy right so i have got now 4 over 3 ec note what it does is equal to 5 over 2 ke i hope you can see that that brings us into that triangle uh, over there and remember i'm looking for cp over uh, dp right so cp to pd or dp so in this case i would have to if i'm working in triangle c cdk right so let's try uh, in triangle cdk so if i can find the ratio between ec over case uh, ke which is essentially what we found now okay so let's try and make it uh, easier for ourselves so now we can say well uh, if we can just try to um, manipulate that mathematically 
all right so i'm going to just simply cross multiply uh, over here right so that i end up with ec to ek right so if we can just take the numbers so four multiplied by two and five uh, multiplied by three so what i end up with four times two that's going to be eight times um eight times ec okay in fact you know what let me try to simplify it so that uh you know it doesn't get too confusing mathematically okay so in this case if i can just put it as a uh, four ec now let me write it uh, at the bottom there okay so if i can just write it there as four ec over three yeah you know i'm always just trying to be mindful of uh, you know so that people can be able to uh, follow what i'm doing is equals to 5ke over two i think that makes it much better to work with right so we cross multiply there okay so i have 15 right ke is equal to 8 ec i hope that makes sense now right now keep in mind what we want we want ec over ke right so ec over ke so you'll see if i divide by ke uh, sorry ke on both sides ke on both sides right and that goes away all right so i want ec over ke so in this case i can also divide by eight on this side now note in this case so we've got ec um ec over ke is equal to 15 over 8 i hope you can see that so i got 15 over 8 and ec over ke now i can go into that so we found the ratio between EC over KE, we found 15 over 8. Now we can go into this triangle now, which is uh, CDK. So I can say in triangle, in triangle CDK, I know that EC, because I've got my parallel lines there, right, uh, again, so that means that EC over KE would therefore now be equal to CP over DP. Okay, so I can say EC over KE is equal to, um, uh, what's that side? CP over DP, yes. So that's EC over D p and that would be equal to 15 over 8 and so we've got the ratio uh, not ec rather uh, that was ep right uh, cp rather uh, cp sorry about that cp okay so that's cp over dp and that's 15 is to 8 so um we've actually just found the ratio that we we're looking for right so cp to pd that's 15 is to 8 and that is it right there cp to dp is 15 is to 8 all right so uh, i shall leave it there i know this last one was a little bit of a maneuver uh, but that's essentially how you're going to be dealing with these um, but I'll do some more examples. So the next time I'll just be looking at uh, just consolidating everything together, uh, looking at grade 11 and grade 12 uh, in terms of Euclidean geometry. All right. So if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Please do it now. OK, right. And uh, um, uh, that notification bell as well. Please just share and like. OK, uh, every lesson that you find value in, just uh, just hit that like button. All right. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.